Okay, so today I'll, I'll talk for the first time about digital circuits with memory. So up until now, we've seen digital circuits, but they all have inputs and some processing, 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 and then some outputs. So you could perform logical operations like we saw last time, ORs and ANDs and NOTs and exclusive ORs. Uh, you can connect that to form more complicated things like adders or uh, other complicated logic. Um, and you can get pretty complicated to sort of do do mathy or logically type things where there's an input and there's a definite output. What we haven't seen is we haven't seen any circuits with memory, but we haven't seen any circuits with feedback. And so they will we'll see circuits with, with feedback, and that's what gives the circuits memory. But before we before we actually do that, let me um, let me draw a logic table of a NAND in a slightly different way that that may be slightly helpful for thinking about um, you know, certain aspects of the quiz or certain other things. It certainly will be helpful for when we get to the actual circuits. So um, I'm going to have a, a NAND here, which is a, a not after it. And I'm going to have two inputs, A and B. And I'm going to draw the, the table here. So the digital circuit, you just list all possible op options, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 1. And the AND of two things is one only when both are high. And so this is 0 only when both are high with the NAND. And otherwise, the AND is 0, and so a NAND would be 1. This is, this is a table for, for a NAND. Let me draw a different gate here. It's an OR gate. But instead, I will invert the inputs. I'll put little bubbles on the inputs instead of on the outputs. Now let's think about what the what the consequence of this is. So 0, 0, they both get inverted to be 1. And 1 or 1 is 1. 0 or 1, um, 0 gets inverted to be a 1. And 1 or anything is 1. 1, 0, this 0 gets inverted to be a 1. 1 or anything is 1. Finally, 1, 1, they both get inverted to be zeros, and 0 or 0 is 0. And this, this has the same truth table as the NAND. So, so this gate here, an OR with inverted inputs, is the same as an AND with an inverted output. And so logically equivalent. And if you were to build the circuit for, for them, they would be the same. And I'm going to draw a memory circuit. I'm going to draw it two different ways, uh, one using NANDs and one using this sort of input inverted ORs, uh, which is just another, another way of writing a NAND. And uh, it, it makes a little bit more sense to analyze the memory circuit with, with this sort of stranger way of drawing the NAND, so which is logically will make more sense. So, so this, this, is, uh, this is a type of latch that I'm going to draw. This is our first memory circuit. And let me just draw it. There's two NANDs here. And the outputs are going to come out. Um, I'm going to call this one Q and this one Q prime. And the, each of these has two inputs. But the trick here is that this output here goes to that input there. And this output here goes back around and up to that input there. And the other inputs are called S and R. OK, now this is equivalent to, let me just change these NANDs for, for these ORs with inverted inputs. There's Q, Q prime. I'm going to take this output, connect it up there, take this output, connect it down here. This is still S, still R. Now let me write what the truth table for this circuit is. So when you build it, you'll build it out of NAND chips. But when I analyze it, I will analyze it with NANDs drawn in this sort of funny way. You know, and logically, it's the same thing. All right, so, so we have two inputs here. We have S and R and two outputs, Q and Q prime. So we just make a logic table. All possible S's and R's are going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And now we just need to analyze what happens in all these possible situations. So, OK, so 0, 0. Um, let's imagine these are both 0. Well, s gets inverted to be a 1. And remember, 1 or anything is going to be a 1. So q is going to be a 1. 
and or you could look up look up look it up in this table r is zero it gets inverted to be a one one or anything is also going to be a one so it doesn't matter what this other input is um now let's look at this case here zero one so s gets inverted to be a one so therefore q is still a one is it one or anything is always one r gets inverted to be a zero so now we have zero or something. So now we actually need to look at this other thing, zero, zero or this. Well, what is this? This is an inverted version of Q. So Q is one, an inverted version of Q is zero. So now we have zero or zero, and zero or zero is, is zero. Um, a similar situation happens here for, for one zero. Um, let's start with R. R gets inverted to become a one. And a one or anything is always a one. So Q prime is always a one. And if we look at S here, S starts off as one, it gets inverted to become zero. Now zero or something, we have to look at this other thing. We already know what Q prime is. Q prime is one, invert it, it's zero. And, uh, and now we have zero or zero. And so this is gonna be zero. All right, so now the tricky one comes here. S and R, let me, let me draw this in, in a different color actually. So you can see, so I'm, I'm gonna label the diagram just for this special case here. So for, for the case where it's one, one, I'll, I'll draw it in pink. And when S is one and R is one, the inverse of that mm -hmm. is zero here and zero here. And remember an OR gate, if one of the inputs is zero, the output is just the other input. Right, so zero or zero is zero, zero or one is one. So when S and R are both one, the output here needs to look to the other input. And so, and so the output for Q is going to be whatever Q prime was, is going, well, it's going to be not, not Q prime and the output for for Q prime is going to be not Q. And so we haven't actually said what, what these are. And the reason is it actually depends on what these were right before you got it into this state. So imagine you were just uh, having this circuit in, in some other, one of these other input states. Say, say the, the one right before it. And you had S B1 and R B0, and we know for sure what Q is, we know for sure what Q prime is. Now suddenly we change R to B1. Well, what's going to happen is this is going to become the opposite of that. So this is going to become zero. And this is going to become the opposite of that. So this is going to become one. So we used to have zero, one, and now we're going to still have zero, one. What if we started off in this state here? Well, if we started off here in, in zero, one, and, and we suddenly raise S to be one, well, this is gonna become the opposite of zero. So this is gonna become one, and this is gonna become the opposite of one, it's gonna become zero. So in this case, it's gonna stay, again, it's gonna stay what it was. So this is a special case, it, it stays, stays, um, stays, where it was. So this is, a, this is the memory state here. So this actually has some memory, memory of its past. So if, if I tell you I'm inputting one one and I ask you what Q and Q prime are, you, you have to say, well, I, I, don't, I don't actually know. I need to know what, where, where you came from. Did you, did you come from this state or did you come from this state? So it actually remembers where where it used to be. So this this latch here can can hold values even um, even when they uh, change to be some common state. So this is pretty cool. I would say that uh, you know this is our first circuit with this kind of digital memory. And and when when you build this, you'll build it using the buttons that you hopefully just built for the quiz. So the buttons. Uh, the buttons that can output 
um, a logic level. You'll, you'll make one of those S and make the other button R. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to tell here when you build the circuit, uh, you know, hitting the buttons, it'll remember which button you hit last, basically. It'll, it'll keep that memory. So this is our first circuit with memory. It's cross-coupled NAND gates or an SR latch, sometimes it's called, uh, or just a latch. Okay, so there's, there's another circuit with memory, which I will, I will hint at. Um, and it is, so if I take this whole thing and I just call this an SR latch, so imagine this whole thing becomes a box and it has an S, S input, an R input, a Q, and a Q prime. So that's an SR latch. Let me take three of these. There's one SR latch, there's another SR latch, and uh, here's a third SR latch. And I'm not going to go through all the logic, but let's, let's imagine connecting them like this. So this one gets connected here, this one gets connected here, this one gets connected all the way back up to there. Um, and you have two inputs, one's going to be called clock, and one's going to be called D. D goes here, and the clock branches off to there. Um, okay, so it looks roughly like this. So these are the SR latches that, that we built above. And it turns out this, this device has, you know, it looks kind of complicated because there's six of these NAND gates. Um, and, and it is a little bit complicated to go through all of, all of the math. But I'll show you the result is quite simple. I'll just describe what it does. So this is called a D flip flop. And it has a Q and a Q, we usually call this Q bar rather than Q prime. And the action of this D flip flop is the following. It is uh, when, uh, well, it's called a clock. When the clock makes a transition from low to high, D gets copied to Q, gets copied to Q. Uh, copied to Q. And Q, uh, Q bar becomes, becomes not Q. Uh, say that again. And Q bar becomes not Q. Otherwise, otherwise, so as long as the clock's not making an upward going trans transition, otherwise, uh, Q and Q bar um, keep their state. So the circuit itself is a little bit more complicated because there's six, six gates and a little bit more feedback. But the action is quite simple. Basically, the output totally ignores the input until the clock makes a rising transition. And then it just copies D over to Q. So let, me draw, let me draw an example of uh, a, a timing diagram, some, some inputs that you can imagine happening. And uh, I'll, I'll describe the action of what, what this thing does here. Okay, so, so let's imagine that uh, D, D is some, some logic level that's either zero or one for a while. And clock, usually this is a more, more steady thing. So there it goes up, there it goes down, there it goes up, there it goes down, there it goes up, there it goes down, there it goes up. And if we were to look at Q and Q bar, the rule says all we only look at the rising edges of clock. So let me label those. Here's a rising edge. Here's a rising edge. Here's a rising edge. Here's a rising edge. And D gets copied over to Q. So we look at what D is at each of the rising edges. So until we see the first rising edge, we, we don't actually know what Q is. So Q might be, might be high, I'll draw some dotted lines, or it might be low, we're not really sure. But as soon as the, we see the first rising edge, we look up to D and we see, ah, okay, 
D was high, but now Q is definitely going to be high. Q is definitely going to be high, and it doesn't matter what D does until the next rising edge. Okay, here's a rising edge. Let's look at D again. Uh, it's high. So D stays high until the next rising edge. Okay, here's a rising edge. What is D doing? D is low. So now Q must go low. Uh, here's a rising edge. D is high. So Q must go high here. And then Q bar is always just the opposite. So again, we don't know what it is, but it must be low here and then high here and then low here. So this is a, a convenient a convenient device, and this is called a D flip-flop. And I would say this is sort of the most uh, logically the simplest building block for, for building circuits with state. Because in between rising edges of the clock, you can do all kinds of computation, and D could be flipping back and forth and you know coming to some intermediate state and you know, it's maybe it's the end of some long chain of gates that's performing some long addition operation or something. Uh, D eventually settles down, and then the rising edge of the clock comes, and that information gets copied over to Q. So this is the basis for all processors, for example. The processor in, executes one instruction, and as it's executing the instruction, all the logic gates are, are doing all kinds of computation. They're, they're flipping around and settling into some final steady state. And then the clock comes in the processor, and the answer to that computation gets transferred over to, to the output here. And then the other thing that happens is the, the next instruction gets loaded into the, the, the working memory and, and the process repeats itself. So, so this, this D flip-flop is, is pretty ubiquitous in, in all these digital designs all the way up to the processors. Um, let me just show you a, a simple, kind of the simplest circuit that, that uses one of these. And it's going to be, it's going to eventually be a counter. So we'll build a counter um, or, yeah, we'll, we'll build a counter with this. So let me, let me erase my, my SR latch here and the truth table for the SR latch. We'll, we'll use some of these D flip flops to build some, uh, to build something that counts in binary. So, eraser, erase, erase, erase. Uh, while I'm erasing, I don't have any questions. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so, for the SR on the top, is that output not connected to anything? Uh, that's right. So we don't really care about the. Okay. The We're only using the Q bar here. Um, I forget that this is on this is, uh, somewhere in the in the book. I, I'll have to find the exact chapter where where this circuit is sort of drawn out in a little bit more detail and, and analyzed. Um, I mean, this sort of double each of these has its own feedback, and then there's this other feedback from here to there, and that that sort of double feedback is what makes it sensitive only to the edge, only to the rising edge of the clock. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not gonna yeah I'm not gonna spend too much time on what's you know how these things work but I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on how to use them. So the simplest simplest thing we can do is uh, is to take one of these D flip flops. So there's a D and the clock and Q and Q bar is always the opposite of Q. Um, so here's your clock coming in. Remember, the clock is always a signal that goes from zero to five volts. I'd say the most common mistake people make is to have some you know, signal that goes from plus five to minus five or something. If you put negative, negative voltages into the inputs of these chips, often bad things happen. So you set up a square wave, check to make sure that it only goes from zero to five before you start putting it in chips. Okay, so here's a clock. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the output of Q bar to uh, to D, and and let's and we'll just call this Q. Okay, so so what happens here? Let me let me draw the signals here. So clock. Imagine this is a, a nice uniform square wave. Zero to five volts. Um, let's write what Q is doing. 
Um, so it, you actually can't, when you first power this thing on, you might not be able to predict what Q is doing, but let's just say, say for example, that it's zero. Um, if Q is zero, then Q bar is gonna be one. And as soon as the rising edge of the clock comes, D is gonna get copied over to Q. But what is D? D is Q bar. So if Q gets, if D gets copied over to Q, that's the same thing as saying Q bar gets copied over to Q. But it's the same thing as saying Q flips from zero to one or from one to zero every time a rising edge of the clock comes. There's a rising edge, there's a rising edge, there's a rising edge, there's a rising edge. What's nice about the circuit is you only ever have to look at the rising edges, figure out what happens then. And Q bar just comes along for the ride as Q's opposite. Uh, I can draw that super well. Yeah. So, let me end it, end it there. All right. So, so we think of this as a binary number here. Let's let's imagine that this is a zero, zero. This is going to be one. Zero, oh, sorry, one, oops, one, 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 zero, one. Well, let me just, let me do one at a time. So this is one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. There's going to be zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. And if we look at the numbers here, um, this is zero, zero. This is zero, one, or sorry, one, one, that's three. One, zero, that's two. Zero, one, that's one. Zero, zero, that's zero. So this is actually counting down. So, so if we were to write um, Q and clock, we would just write the sequence of these things. It's, we start out at zero, zero, but it counts down. So there's three, two, one, zero, and then it goes back to three, two, one, zero. So we've made a, a two bit down counter. And we're just ignoring Q bar because the only purpose of Q bar is to feed back to D. Uh, okay, so, so we've done two things. We've made a down counter, but we've also made a frequency divider. So if you have a square wave at a certain frequency, Q is at a frequency that's half half of the input frequency. And this is something you can't really do with analog circuits in, in the same way, right? You can, if you have a square wave that has harmonics, the harmonics of a square wave are always at higher frequency, never at lower frequency. So here, here we're making lower frequency versions of, of square waves uh, you know, by, by factors of, of two. Uh, and you can chain these. So let me, let me do that. Uh, let me, now let me just draw it over here. So, so imagine you, you took this Q and you, you continued to chain it. So uh, maybe I'll be able to redraw. So there's D and the clock. Um, Q, Q bar. The Q connected across. And now let me put this into the clock of the next one. Q bar. Q, Q bar connected around, and let me put this into the clock of the next one. Oops. So we can keep going like this as much as we want, and take the Q. Um, let me call this uh, Q, Q1, Q2, Q3, and this could be either called clock or Q0. And let's let's just write what uh, what happens here. Get rid of this. So, and this is the last thing we're doing. So if I were to write uh, the numbers for Q, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, 
P3, let's say they all start at zero. Well, the first thing that's going to happen is the clock is going to change to one, right? Q0 or, or the clock is going to change to one. And as soon as it changes to one, there's going to be a rising edge here. So, so Q1 is going to invert, which makes a rising edge here. So Q2 is going to invert, which makes a rising edge here. So Q3 is going to invert. And then clock is going to go back down and nothing happens because that's a falling edge. Now clock comes back up, it's a rising edge. So as soon as there's a rising edge on, on here, uh, this the opposite of Q1 gets copied into Q1. So Q1 is going to change. But now that's a falling edge for the next transistor. So a falling edge doesn't affect anything. So these are going to stay the same. And you can see that this is starting to count down in binary. In fact, that's actually what happens. Clock is going to go to zero, right? nothing's going to change. And then uh, now, now clock is going to go back. And you can just imagine this thing counting down. One, zero, uh, one, 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 zero, one, zero, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to count down until it reaches one, uh, until it reaches all zeros and then it starts, starts over again. Um, so this is called a, it's called a ripple counter. It's called a ripple counter because information about a change here kind of ripples through all the, all the flip-flops. So if you were to really zoom in on the scope, you could see that there is some delay for each of the, each of the stages. So as soon as the clock changes, especially if you're doing something dramatic, like going from all zeros to all ones, you'll see that that happens in, in stages. And I think your oscilloscopes are kind of barely fast enough to see, to see that if you, if you get here and you end up building this. Um, so, so that is it. We, oh, oh, and if you look at the frequency of Q3, for example, it is, uh, well, Q1 is half of the clock. Q2 is a quarter of the clock. The frequency of Q3, since it changes so rarely, it's an eighth of the clock. Now you can continue this forever and divide, divide your clock by any amount and have a, a down counter count by any amount. Um, if you wanted an up counter, you could look at all the Q bars. You have to invert clock separately with an inverter. But if you invert all these bits of a down counter, you end up with an up counter. So it's, uh, it's a way to get an up counter if you want. So at some point, you'll, you'll uh, if you make it to this point in the lab, you'll build one of these. And uh, if you connect the outputs to LEDs, and remember, if, if you connect an output to an LED, there always has to be a resistor. You can never have a direct path. Uh, you can never put five volts directly across a resistor, uh, directly across an LED. That's bad. But we need some, some resistance in there. A 1K resistor is perfectly fine. Basically, all the resistors here can be 1K or 10K. Uh, uh, either one is, is totally fine. Uh, but if you do connect your outputs to LEDs to see what's going on, always, always put a 1K resistor in there. Uh, and make sure the LED is positioned in the correct orientation. All right, so that's, that's all I have for today. You know, you'll build, you'll build uh, one of these SR latches and play with it with the buttons that you built for the quiz as, as the S and the R input. And then you'll, you won't build this unless you really want to, but more likely you'll just uh, use a chip that has one, uh, I think there's a, one of the chips has two of these D flip flops in it, and another chip has four of the D flip flops in it. So it has all uh, has has four of the D flip flops. Um, I think the disadvantage is the chip with the four D flip flops. You don't have access to all of the Q bars. You only have access to the Qs, I think, or either that or all the clocks are connected together. I have to look at the to look at the schematic. Uh, there's there's some disadvantage to the one that has more more of these just because they don't they're not enough pins. All right. Uh, let me let me take questions here before I uh, stop the recording and just sort of go into general question taking mode, either for the quiz or, or for stuff you're going to start in the lab. All right. So 